everybody, my name is Prasha Kimberly and once again welcome to my YouTube channel. It's official guys. I have a YouTube channel and I'm so excited and I'm so happy. And as I had promised you earlier, I said I was going to give you a bonus video on Saturday and today's Saturday and this is the bonus video. So I do hope that you enjoy it. But before I get into it, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for showing all your support, all your love. The comment section is always so good. Um, the views, I mean, the views are just going by the number and I, I'm overwhelmed. I started this thinking, oh well, I hope this makes somebody smile. But it looks like it's making a whole lot more people smile than I expected and that means a lot to me because um, one of my main goals is to just help in any way possible to alleviate the thing that's called mental health. You know, mental health disorders, there's so many of them out there and there's so many people suffering in silence. And sometimes all you need is just somebody who can make you smile and I do hope that this channel will do just that. So. Without further ado, thank you to all my subscribers, to everybody, and to do do everybody, especially you who's watching. If you haven't subscribed, go right now. Click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, and do the things that need to be done because I'm about to put a smile on your face every week, starting from, well, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys are good. Uh, my husband's calling. I'll be right back. Yeah. So as I was saying... Thank you so much to everybody who's here who hasn't subscribed but is about to subscribe. Thank you to everybody who's watching. Thank you so much for all the love and all the support. I love you all. And um, here is today's bonus story. And I know you're going to love it because it's obviously a funny one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the time my name was written in the school's black book. <laughs> <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed this one. All right. So yes, of course, you're wondering how, my mushi, how did you end up in a you a whole I don't know all of this in a black book, and yes. On top of that, <laughs> I was in the black book in Form 1 first term. This is when it happened, Form 1 first term. So, if I look back at this situation, now that I'm older and everything, I'm looking at it and I'm realizing, you know what? Maybe I was depressed, maybe I was sad. Because I, I was coming, you know, from primary school and there was a school that I wanted to go to and then I couldn't go to that one. Um, and then I wanted to go to another one. But then Wakandiramba, like they put me on the waiting list and then they never got back to me. Um, I'm going to have to apologize for the background noise. That's Sushi. I'll show you what she's doing later. But yeah. But while, you know, I was just really sad about not being able to go to my first option or my second option. And my third option was supposed to be boarding school elsewhere. The first one was a day school. The second one was boarding, but it was a better boarding school. Now, I, I was just, you know, I'd run out of all my options and yeah, I was really sad. So while, because I could not go to the first option, my mom then cut my hair, which was now, it was long. If you're mad about the hair I cut recently, you should be even madder about the hair that I cut in grade 7. Because that was long natural hair. That was longer than the hair I had initially. So yeah, <laughs> that should make you mad. But anyway, we're not here for that. Eh, you know what? I, I couldn't go to the second school. Up and my mom I had cut my hair. And it was long hair. It was beautiful hair. And I was just sad about it. And then I just ended up going to Oreo Girls. Which turned out to be a very good experience for me. I actually wouldn't have gone anywhere else because of the experience that I had at Oreo Girls. But I ended up going to Oreo Girls and in the beginning I didn't want to go there. You know, I, it was the last option because, you know, time yange afamba and people were already in school and I'd been waiting and I'd been waiting. I think I waited for two weeks before I started my Form 1. So I was really depressed, didn't want to go there, had my hair cut for no reason. And I was just really just 
sad and probably rebellious, but that's not the point. The point is, when I started my Form 1, how then did I get into the Black Book in Form 1 first term? So, I made two friends, right? And um, these two girls, yeah, I still talk to them, we're cool. And these girls were just, they were fun, you know? Um, one of them had an older sister who was in Form 4 at the time. The other one had other sisters, older sisters, but they, you know, were past high school and, you know, they were doing their stuff. And I was the only one who was um, at home with my mom and I'm the big sister because I'm the firstborn. So I'm the big sister and the one who sets the example and blah, blah, blah. So I had so much pressure and I just wanted to have fun with these friends and we connected and we were tight. You know, we were really tight. And then... I don't know what it is at single sex schools and I really don't understand. I, I think, I don't know, but there's always the other gender, you know, it's in trouble with the gender, the main gender in the school. And what I'm trying to say is if you're a male teacher at a girl's school, you're in trouble. If you're a female teacher at a, at a boy's school, you're in trouble constantly and did you? So now, um, there was this little fun culture in class that we had where we'd occasionally tease our teachers, particularly the male ones. I remember there was one particular male teacher who was young, he was unmarried, and a few girls had a crush on him, so they would occasionally tease him. I remember there's one time in winter where this girl was like, send you my gloves in, you're like, can I have your gloves? I'm cold. And people were giggling, and you know, because people... You know, the girls were just doing what girls do. And, you know, it was just like that. And we were just, we were just uh, funny. We were a funny bunch, especially our class was a funny bunch. So we just had this culture of teasing these teachers once in a while. But then the thing that actually got us or got me particularly in the black book was not related to me actually teasing them. It was basically because a few other girls had had enough of it and they decided to then report the matter. Now, on this fateful day, what had happened earlier was there was an elderly history teacher who was a male. And um, when he got into class for his history lesson, he had chalk, like board chalkboard, like the chalk that they use. Yeah, board chalk or teacher's chalk. It was on his trousers toward the back, lids on his bum. And he <laughs> he was standing in class and he was writing, you know, on the board and he was writing. And we were all distracted, busy looking at the chalk that he had sitting, uh, sat on, you know, he had chalk dust on his back and we were giggling. And he asked, why are you giggling? What's going on? What's funny about the notes I'm writing? And then yours truly raised her hand say I'm like yes what is it peter said and i say say you've got chalk on your trousers and then he just dusts you you know it's like ah oh, okay is that boy i love you and people are like yes and then i'm like okay fine and then he just dusts the front of his trousers because that's where he assumes the problem is and then he continues writing but we continue laughing i'm like sir not there you, you have it in the back and then people giggled, like the giggle just, uh, <laughs> the giggles exploded and <laughs> people were laughing. And then, so I think the main issue then was you told a male teacher that he had choke on his bum and you're probably not supposed to do that. So I don't know, some girls got angry about it. I don't know what was happening because, you know, for one, there are those people who are just uh, the teacher's babies and then there are other ones who always want the favor and then there are the rebellious ones and then there are the quiet ones. So I don't know where exactly I was there. I, I was obviously outspoken, but I was somewhere in there. So that was the first incident, you know, where um, the I, I told the teacher, no, it's not there. It's not the front. It's at the back. And then people laughed about it. And I guess he was a little embarrassed because he, you know, did a little laugh and continued writing his notes. Then he went on to just uh, dust off his backside. And, you know, we thought that was done. But then in the next period again, there was another teacher. Now he was a science teacher and that's the young unmarried science teacher I told you about earlier, the one where the other girl had asked for his gloves and stuff. 
So now this wasn't me, but this was somebody else. Asked him in front of the whole class, are you married and stuff? Do you have a girlfriend? And he would giggle and answer. But in hindsight, I realized that he was quite uncomfortable. Like, so he was a bit uncomfortable if I think about it now. But at the time, we were all giggling. At this time, it wasn't me asking the questions. But we were all giggling and yeah, we were happy, you know. Ah, Saka, where is his girlfriend? Chichi, and you know. Ah, little did we know that in the class, there were few other individuals who just weren't having it. Like, absolutely. And we are just living our lives we are just having fun so the final 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 straw for these particular students was and i don't know how to say it but it was very it, it was kind of a bad incident i mean it was a bit bad so remember i told you my friend had an older sister who was in form four at the time i think and um she had a phone like the sister had a phone and then around about that time, Doma Koraya Aitwa Jema Tma Odio. And and you would um there I don't think WhatsApp was a thing there, but Facebook was and um there was I don't know, there was a trend, Yema audio messages or audios that you could send to each other i don't remember what exactly was going on but this friend of mine had an audio on her phone now this particular audio was vulgar from the word go it was vulgar i promise you it is probably the most vulgar thing i've heard to date in this particular audio i'll just give you a hint they were talking about types of lady parts if you remember that audio, it's fine. But types of lady parts, that's the type of audio it was. And there was a man describing and all of that. So ah, we all got, a funny thing is the whole class, the whole class gathered, gathered to hear this audio, right? And everybody was having fun and they were giggling and just saying, ha, ah, mm, and, mm, and you know what girls do? And they were just doing, you know, the giggles. But then, obviously, there are those saints who didn't want to hear about it, you know. Well, they heard the audio. I was actually surprised when the issue was being reported because they were also giggling. But then when they reported it, it was as if they were not involved. You know, those kinds of people. But it's fine. So now the audio is being reported. Oh, sorry. That's no. So we all heard the audio, right? We all listened. Now, the thing that happens now after you've listened to something funny is you start to uh, repeat it. You know, you start to talk about it again, you start to discuss it, and you start making fun of each other. And like, you weren't doing it, you weren't doing it. And, you know, people get slightly offended, but it's funny, you know, and it's giggly because it's vulgar. And I don't know what it is about human nature. We want to do, we want those things, the bad things. Those are the things that we like, you know. I don't know what it is. But that's the type of mood that we were in after listening to this audio. And I promise you, we listened to this audio several times because we knew the names, you know, in full. Like we were aware of what it was. And um, we were just laughing and teasing each other and everything. And that's when, um, <laughs> that's when things went sideways. Um, the next morning, no. In fact, the last lesson that we had on that day belonged to the teacher who was the class teacher. You know how each, even though you've got subject teachers, there's that one teacher that a particular class reports to. And that's usually called the class teacher. Or I don't know if it's the form teacher. I don't know. But I'll just call this lady the class teacher. Now, this lady was... I could tell I liked her. She she taught English and I discovered much English. Taispawa, you know, literature, English. I loved English. So I really liked this teacher because she was an English teacher and she was just soft. But then she had this mama vibe, like she was mama. And yeah, it was but yeah. So the teacher comes to the class, you know, where we're thinking, you know what, we're going to learn. Because she actually brings her books and stuff. 
And then when she brings the stuff, hands out our books, like the work that we had done the other day, she then says, ah, Nasa Chadzids, we're not having a lesson today. We would like, I'd like to have a discussion with you. And, uh, okay, that's when we realize, okay, something's wrong. And obviously, me and my friends were kind of, you know, taganyuma, because something wrong on the day that this particular audio surfaces and the whole class listens to it so we knew well i knew that something was off and i just sat you know in the seat you know and i just knew i mean i just knew that something was wrong but you know what it's fine uh yeah and then the teacher sits, you know, she sat by the window and she was just uh, very chilled and she started asking us, okay, ladies, so what's happening in class? And then, yeah, that's when they surfaced. Ma'am, tudaku uzae kutipane wanu harukita basare kutawara zinyadzi kuchukoro. Plus, kutipane wanu harukita basare kuharasa ma male teachers. Harassing. Okay. Oh, teach Rugiji. Mosue, Nas, in fact, in the Nas, Mascot, eh, Peters, out the same good, one a choke, Kumashur, Akawaita, good one pokotip and belpe class. Ah, and I'm thinking, ah, uh ah, -uh. how does the, I didn't tell him, he asked. <laughs> He asked, why are you laughing? And I told him, I offered him advice. I didn't, uh -uh. I didn't make him remove it in front of the class. He removed the wrong part. I just directed him to where it was. But you know what? It's fine. This girl packaged this story in such a way that it would make me look bad. And I did look bad, but that was fine. You know, I did then say, but ma'am, he had choke on his backside. How are we supposed to have a successful lesson while looking at the choke on his backside because he was writing notes on the board the whole time? And she was like, okay, fine. You know what? It's not really bad. But then again, the girl then went ahead and talk, like the girl was reporting, then went ahead and spoke about my friend um who had been part of the team that was asking the other science teacher the younger guy if he was married and about his girlfriend and about his love life so then it became two stories and we're friends it's me and her and we're friends so <laughs> while it's me and her and we're friends and now we're both in trouble and the issue is um male teacher harassment the next thing that then happened was uh the audio they then spoke about the audio and then the girls ah they went mad i don't know what it is but then when when things go wrong people want to disassociate themselves with you completely so now it was like we had forced the class to listen to the audio and yet people had come it was just me and my friend listening to this stuff and laughing our ass off but he, it made they made it look like they made it look like we went to each and every one of them and said listen 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 when they came to i mean honestly we were listening in our corner. We sat at the back of the class. We were listening. We were giggling. We were doing what we were doing. Then we invited we attend to that one's well. We invited that one's well. But now, when it's being reported, it's like they made us listen. You know, we were the, the perpetrators of this crime. And we're shocked. And we're shocked. And we're looking at everyone in class. And they've basically chickened out. Nobody wants to say... Um, we went to obviously there was no way they were going to say we went to listen by ourselves but yeah that's just the point you came and you listened and then now you just bail because somebody talked about it or somebody reported it but again nobody wants their parents to be called to school so they would rather just not be involved or show any type of involvement so i understood that and we were like okay and then the teacher was like okay uh, i've heard this um this classroom's um complaints 
I will be taking these three girls to the headmistress's office and um, they will be dealt with so you guys can read this Ningini, this chapter and answer what not and I'm going with these girls. So we are going now I'm thinking ah uh, yeah my mom the only prayer I was making to the on the way to the headmistress office was my mom they should not call my mom please at least give me a punishment because my mom my my viro my babo ah ah my mom used to beat me <laughs> Ah, Jagaro is so any Jagaro and Chigura Chai, so Chai. Quit a straight with a Mukoya day. Isha Mu, it's beatings. Even for the smallest of things, I will do a different story on the things that I've been beaten for. Yes, I was a naughty kid, but the truth is, I got beaten for a lot of things. I was naughty, yes, I had naughty moments, but yeah, when my mom would beat you, she would beat you. And this wasn't child abuse. I don't want people in the comment section telling my talking about child abuse. This was African culture. That's what we do. I have no problem with the way my mom did not spare the road. Because if she had spared the road, I would have been a spoiled kid. So I thank my mom for everything that she has done for me. Now, ah, we are, and I'm praying. No, man. They should not call my mom. I will get into trouble for this. And then we get to the headmistress's office and she says what what was going on what happened you know and she made us explain and we i couldn't explain i mean they tried to make us repeat the stuff that was in the audio and i just bailed i said no i'm not gonna say i forgot i'm not gonna say anything and um uh, they realized that we had obviously refused to say the stuff you know to them so they realized that it must have been pretty bad so one of the girls like one of my other friends got dismissed because she didn't have a particular issue that was like she didn't have a particular motion like a crime that she had committed like she was there by association technically even though obviously we were all friends and we we're in it together but she didn't have a particular because for me and my other friend because remember there's three of us for me and my other friend, it was an active crime plus the association. And for her, it was just the association. She hadn't had any case of harassing the teacher. So me and the other friend were detained for a little longer. And the other girl, you know, she was let, you know, she was left and she was let off with a warning. Now, me and my other friend, my other friend is the one who's the, who had the phone who made people listen to the audio and the phone wasn't hers it was her sister's but the lucky thing is the sister probably wasn't you know there at the time i don't know because they couldn't confiscate the phone and um i guess both me and her were then um you know we were we had a crime but there was no way to prove the crime so uh to my relief the headmistress said i'm gonna write you in the black book it's too early. It's too early for you guys to be here with such issues. You're just, it's barely been two months and you're already in the black book. Why? You know, I'm going to give you a warning and I'm going to put you in the black book. If you do anything else again, it's over. I'm calling your parents. And I was so relieved. It was, but we did get a punishment though. We, um, I think we had to... I think, because I remember Tandagashan Zabadza. So it's, it was either weeding or uh, clearing out some grass in a particular area. And obviously, it was a big patch of land. So it was quite a big punishment. But that, I promise you, was way better than having my mom call to the school and me being beaten up over a silly audio. So I'm so happy that happened. And, um, well, that's the story of how I got into the black book. I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I, I was a naughty kid in the first few months of my, um, high school, but eventually I then became uh, focused. I then realized, you know what? I can actually make the best out of this situation because I didn't like being at that school at the time, but I eventually made, 
you know, the, a, the decision that, you know what, I'm here and I can do better than what I'm doing right now. And I started doing well in school, started doing um, well in um, extracurricular activities, captain of this, played basketball, played tennis, swimming. I was just basically an all-rounder and that's a story for another day. But I just wanted to share with you this funny story of how I ended up in the black book. I do hope it put a smile on your face. <laughs> and I do hope that it made you laugh. And thank you so much again for all your support. If you have not subscribed, please do so now. I would so, so appreciate it if you would subscribe. Turn on post notifications because you need to know when I'm posting new stuff. And thank you so much for all your love and support. Thank you so much for watching. 